Right, so welcome colleagues to lecture two, video B. So um, leader, I want to answer the question that you asked uh, earlier, pertaining to a case where, okay, suppose you have bought a vehicle on credit, right? This time around mm -hmm. for cash. So obviously let's just use the same amounts. So we can say the account to be debited, it will be the vehicle account with the value 150, thousand rands. One fifty thousand rands. And the account to be credited, right? Normally when you buy a vehicle on finance or on credit, you get it through a bank. So it will be in form of a loan. Okay. That would be the account that to be credited instead of bank. Where it involves a credit, you would credit the account loan. So maybe uh, they might give you a specific bank account. So I'll just use the FIN bank. Suppose that's where you obtain the finance as a business to buy that or to purchase that vehicle on credit. This is how the entry would be. So if we are to answer that question whereby you have got that column for account debited, all right? The column for account credited to answer this part first, all right? Before I talk about the effects on assets, effect on the equity and the effects on the liabilities. So I, I'm just showing you the same thing. It's just that I'm abbreviating for the interest of space and time. So now the account debited, obviously to be what? It will be vehicle. And then the account to be credited, it will be what? Uh, a bank, if ever you bought it on, yeah. or loan, if you bought it on credit, yes. Yeah, because this time we bought it on credit, so we indicate loan, and sometimes they'll give you an, the name of the bank where you obtain the loan to buy that vehicle, so the entry would look like something like this. So the account debited, it is vehicle, and the account credited, it is FinBank. So what has happened there, loan FinBank? We have just um applied the double entry, principle or the double entry system in this context. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. No, you do, do this. Right. And then we can also just, okay, before I even talk about the effects here and likes, but I wanna also show you where we had bought the vehicle for cash. So obviously the account debited, it's vehicles. And then the account to be credited is, is bank. bank, right. Now, what about when we sell that car? Uh, and this time around, let's assume we have sold the car on credit. I mean, for cash. So what would happen is because we are receiving money, the account debited would be, and in fact, can I show this one separately? Where, you know, you have sold the vehicle. I'll show it separately, not here, because I don't want to okay. continue. Right. So on this one, what am I trying to show you? I'm trying to show you a case where where we've got an increase in assets, right? And in particular, where we've bought them under two circumstances, where it's on credit or it's for cash. Now, because we are seeing assets are increasing because of this debit of vehicle, on the asset column, which is this one here, you're gonna put a plus sign next to it to say assets are increasing to the value of 150,000. Now, what about in the lab? Uh, what about this one? Loan FinBank because this one is called it's a liability, right? So it means yes. the effect would be on the liability column. But the question is, is it a plus for the liabilities or is it a minus? Now, I want to answer that question for you. The moment you see us saying plus to the liability columns, it means we've received a credit from a third party. We have received a scholarship from third party. That's what it means. The moment you see a minus on the liability column, it means we are repaying or we've paid the scholarship back. Are we together? So in this case, right. So the moment you see a plus, let me write that in, in, in red because I'm just explaining. So the moment you see a minus, I mean a plus here on the liability column, it means you have received 
credit. You obtain the credit from the bank or from a credit. Are we together there? That's the only time you would see a plus on the liability column whenever you receive a scholarship. Okay. That would be a plus on the credit, I mean, sorry, on the liability column. And the moment you see a minus on the liability column, it means you have repaid. So the, the credit. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes. Yeah. So you are no longer owing. Yeah, so it means, I know you might still be owing, but you are still repaying. Because remember, with repayment oh. of the liability it's month by month, right? Those okay. installments. Okay. So when you're trying to reflect the effect of the installment repayment, it will be a minus maybe 5,000 because that's the installment we are paying monthly. Okay. okay. You see the logic. Well, they'll tell you then, therefore, then you are paying this month. Therefore, then yeah. you have to put minus of that exactly. on, on the liability side. Yes. But if you have not yet paid, it's going to be a plus sign. It's still just going to be a plus sign for the meantime. Okay. Right? Because the transaction we are recording, it has to do with us buying the asset on credit, not yet repaying the asset. Okay. So the entry would be, uh, let me change the color. So for the loan, FinBank, it would be a plus 150,000 under the liability column. So if we are recording it, we have not yet paid. So yeah. then we have received this loan yes. of 150,000. Yes. Okay. Once you start paying it, then it's going to be a minus of that part of a certain amount. That you have paid. Correct. Correct. Okay. So let's say now we are repaying, right? Uh, it will be a different transaction from this because this transaction I'm showing you, it's a transaction where we are buying an asset, not necessarily repaying for it. I mean, repaying the loan. If I'm repaying yeah, the buying loan, it, yeah, buying it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now if I'm repaying the loan, here's the entry, just uh, to, to answer your question quickly. If I'm repaying, obviously, um, there's two things involved. That, you see that installment you are paying monthly. It's an expense mm -hmm. to the business. All right? What do I mean? Because money is flowing out of the account. That's number one. So we're going to credit bank. Why? Money is flowing out to repay the loan. And then what are we going to debit? Going to debit loan here. So it's a loan expense, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, Lita. So when we are paying, mm -hmm. we are saying when we are paying that particular loan, what is, is going to be credited is the loan. Yeah. Okay. So now this time around, instead when of us debiting it, uh, sorry, instead okay. of us crediting the loan, because I carry now, a loan is reduced when you pay. So okay. instead of it being on the credit side, it has to be on the debit side now. But we are only reflecting the money, the portion that we are paying monthly. Assuming it's 5,000. Here on the asset column, you're going to have minus 5,000. And then for the loan side, what's happening? Because the liability is going down, you're going to have minus 5,000 as well. Something like that. So equity, there's no effect on equity as yet. Repeat again. There's no effect on equity as yet. No, 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 no. The, the, the time when you have the effect on equity, it will be, okay, I'll come to it. But for now, I don't want to mention it because it might confuse you. But for now, so if, okay, if you're only recording just the repayment part, this is how the okay. entry will be on the basic accounting okay. equation. And then, um, mm -hmm. so if it has no effect, say, for instance, with the purchase of the vehicle on credit, if it does not affect any of this column, you just put the entry zero there. So there's zero effect. So, okay, okay. Hmm. You wanted to ask a question? No, no I wanted to check. Um, hmm? You bought a car on loan. Mm -hmm. Then assets is going to be plus 150 assets on uh, on assets, 150,000 mm -hmm. on assets. Correct. And then we are saying on equity, there's they, they zero effect, you know? Yes, sir. And then uh, there will be plus 150,000 because you you, 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 you you bought that particular car mm -hmm. on loan. Yes, sir. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I wanted to check that. So on equity, there's no effect as yet. There's no effect, yeah. Because so once you start paying it now, when you pay 5,000, 
-hmm. then the, the, what, what will be uh, debit rent is going to be a loan. Yeah. And then, um, and then the bank also will be involved because there's financial transaction. Yeah. That's so what the bank will be all. Yes. Will be, will be, uh, the will only be. reason why bank is involved is because you are money is going out of your account to pay for the okay. loan. So anytime you get money going out, money coming in, just no bank is gonna be involved somehow. Similarly, yeah, this scenario. Hmm? Five thousand because we are paying a loan. Yes. It's gonna minus your assets with five thousand. Correct. And Correct. on the other side, on your liability. Mm -hmm. Then it's go it's going to minus that one hundred and fifty to one hundred and forty five. Like it is being Correct. minus by five thousand. Yeah. Okay. So this one hundred fifty thousand is being reduced by that installment of five thousand. That's what it means. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And no, then so it. with this one now, I want you to see the the case where you bought the car, uh, for cash. So okay. there, cause it's gonna be a plus one hundred fifty thousand. Why? The vehicles are coming into the business, but now money is going out to buy that car. So guess what? Because the bank is an asset, it will be a minus. Also, again, on the asset column. Notice there was no effect on the equity, and no liability. effect on the liability as well. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So on assets, there will be plus because mm -hmm. we have a car now that we have bought with 150000 So we have an asset. Yes. On the version bread, we we have minus money in your yeah. account. Yes, exactly. So the, the very same hundred and fifty thousand that you bought the car with is going to be minus. It's also going to be bank. a resulting minus on the asset column. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That minus and minus and and, and, yes. and plus yes. and minus will be done only on assets. Yes. The effect yes. will be only on asset side. Yes, sir. No, right. no perfect, perfect. So this was to explain a scenario, you know, just to show you what causes asset to increase, how do you record the effects on the basic accounting equation. Now we want to deal with the scenario where assets are decreasing now. Where assets are decreasing. So we mentioned that assets decrease when we sell them. So when you sold, sorry, when you've sold the asset, when the asset has been destroyed, destroyed. Mm -hmm. or maybe if you just simply gave it away, meaning say when the asset has been donated, yeah. donated right? So I want to deal with the case whereby the asset was sold. So how do you show the effect on the basic accounting equation, what account will be debited, and similarly, what account um, would be credited here, right? And then, of course, we need to show the effect on assets, the effect on equity, and similarly, the effect on liabilities. Now, let's assume you, you decided to um, to sell one of your vehicles. I'm going to also apply use inventory. So with inventory, I'm going to use that as a typical example where you are selling an asset for credit. Meaning say you're not receiving money immediately. So what do you do? Right. So let's start with a vehicle. So let's say that vehicle you have bought for 150000 You decided to sell that vehicle for maybe after three years, you decided to sell it for 100,000 rands, right? So what is happening, your asset vehicle, it's going to be credited. Why? Because the vehicles are being reduced by selling them. And then the question is, how are these assets being uh, reduced? We are selling the vehicle. So remember the double entry says for every debit, there should be a corresponding credit. For every credit, there should be a corresponding debit entry. So if I'm crediting vehicle, what am I going to debit? Question is, I'll be debiting the manner in which I have sold this asset. So if it's sold for cash, I'm going to debit bank because money is going to flow into the business. So we said we are selling this vehicle for how much? 100,000. So for assets, it's going to be a plus 100,000 to show you that money is coming in. 
And then because we are selling this asset vehicle, right? I'm seeing vehicles accredited, credited in the sense that these assets are decreasing. Therefore, on the asset column, I'm going to see a decrease also of 100K. And then on equity, it will be zero. On liabilities, it will be zero. Why is it like this? Simple and straightforward. You have sold the vehicles. What's happening to vehicles? They are reducing. Where do assets decrease? On the credit side. But at the same time, we are receiving money, which is a form of an asset again to the business. That's why we are debiting bank because money is coming in. So assets in form of bank, in form of money rather, it's actually increasing. So hence you see a plus on the asset column of 100K. And then for the assets uh, which are being sold out, which is vehicles, we're going to see a resulting effect of a negative 100,000 rands. Now, um, with this issue of selling, you don't sell on credit all the time. I mean, you don't sell for cash all the time. Sometimes you can uh, sell something on credit to a client, which normally happens with you guys as attorneys. When you offer a service to your clients, they don't pay you immediately. All right? Okay. They don't what? Pay you immediately. So I'm going to illustrate using an attorney practice. So let's say a client comes to you. They want you to do a service, and that service is going to cost them 5,000 rands. What's going to happen? You're going to open an account for them called a client's control account. So a client's control sorry, account sorry, is an sorry, asset. So sorry, you... repeat again. No, I was just saying, sorry, Lisa. is it possible that um, we make the very same example using a vehicle again, but we are not selling it on, in cash? Oh, yeah. yeah. No problem. Problem. No problem. Then I will come to the client control after. Ne? Okay. That I think, yeah, that way to make it to make it better. All right. So now what happens? Let's assume maybe it's still the vehicle. This time we did not sell it uh for cash, right? We did not sell it for cash, but um, you know, we decided to sell it on 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 credit. So how are we gonna deal with this? So vehicles would still be credited. Why? Because they are reducing, we are selling. But now, because we are selling it on credit, you're going to have an account called debtors control here. Or that same account, it can also be called trade receivables. Oh, sorry, we are saying what will be credited will be... Repeat again? That, um, we are saying uh, we credit the debtors control account. Yes. And okay. or we open a debtors control account. That's how you can put it, um, which is also the same thing as called trade receivables. Trade receivables. So it's just simply meaning to say that you've just opened an asset account reflecting that, that somebody still owes you money and they ought to repay you back at a later day in future. So people that owe a business money, we call them debtors. Or trade receivables so because we are selling all right we are expecting to i mean selling on credit we are expecting to be repaid in future so we have to open this debtors control account which is the account that we will be debiting so you debit debtors control and then you credit vi codes so suppose with the same values for the debtors control account Whenever you sell something on credit to a customer, it will increase your assets by that value you have sold those assets for. So in this case, we have sold it for 100,000. That's why you see an effect of plus 100,000 on the asset column, which is to do with the effect of the data's control. Now, vehicles are going out of the business. So obviously, it will be the same amount of negative, but this time around with a negative sign um, of 100,000 rents. Zero effect on equity, zero effect on the liability, something like this. Okay. Yeah. So basically, that's how you, you record it. Now, I want to show you another example, but uh, just to show you in like, you know, a case whereby uh, not necessarily a decrease in assets, but this time around, it will be in a case of you as a practicing attorney, what kind of typical transactions would you come across? 
let's assume you have a client that approaches you and requests a service to be done. So, so this is, um, okay, I want you to picture it this way. So you as an attorney practice, okay, you'd get clients that would approach you. So they can be client one, client two, client three. Like this, right? All of these are your clients. So they would approach you requesting for services. So they would approach you requesting for, for services. Now, when they approach you requesting for services, I'm talking of either client one, client two, client three, right? What happens from your side as a practicing attorney, all right, in your records, you need to open up specific accounts concerning those clients of yours. So there's something called a client's ledger, right? And then there's something called a trust creditor's ledger that you would also open at the same time, right? And then of course you would also have a general ledger, but I'm, I'm not gonna talk about that. It's not as important. Now, here is the reason why these two are open. So your client's ledger, my brother, it's just a record summary of all the clients you are dealing with who is owing you money. Oh, okay. putting it in simple terms, we have requested for services from you. So you'd have client control account for client one. Similarly, you would also have a client control account for client two. The same is true for client three. And then on the other end, you would have something called a trust creditors control account for client one. And you also have the same story for client two. What is the purpose of a trust creditor? Well, here is the reason. Sometimes you have a client requesting for a service and they have money available. So they pay immediately. Okay. So client one, let's assume has paid immediately, I meaning to say they deposited something into the account for you to begin with the service, all right? And now, what about client two, no payment made? So, you, because these are the kind of transactions you would come across with regards to a client, all right? So let's assume there's, a, there's a, such transactions where for clients one, this client has paid you immediately, and then for client number two, he has not made any payment. Right, but now with clients, one when they are depositing money to your bank account, they would deposit that money in the trust bank. Okay, that's where the money would go. All right, and then when you are transferring, I mean, let's say now the service you have already started with it on a month to month basis, um, you are allowed according to the Legal Practice Act to transfer a portion of your payment for services to the client, you are allowed to transfer that money from the trust bank account to your business bank account as part of paying yourself for the service, All right? So now, but let's look at a scenario where, you know, we have client one requesting for a service and they paid you immediately. So obviously when they pay you directly into your bank account, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to debit bank. Obviously bank will be affected in that transaction. So let me do it this way to make it easier for you to understand, right? So I'm dealing with client one over here who has paid immediately. Uh, why I'm using this? Because there is assets account involved there, right? So now when a client is paid you immediately, very important to understand is, is that because money is coming into your into the business, it's going to be deposited obviously into the trust account. So there's a bank account that is affected and to be precise, it is called trust bank. And this account, it will be debited. Please pay attention now. So why are we debiting the trust bank here? Because the client is paid immediately. 
for you to start with their service request. Now, because we need to keep track also. Hello? Yes, sir. Again, also, when the client is paying you, yes, uh, you should not actually take that particular money to your business account. You no, you should, should not. Not to... immediately. Not immediately. Right. Yeah. Because they are transfer, uh, we call them, okay. So they are transfer rules that needs to be obliged to first before you can transfer money from your trust bank to your business bank, okay? So be, just because the client is paid immediately doesn't mean you take that money from the trust and you put it to the business. Mm -hmm. Certainly not. Mm -hmm. There has to be a service that a service record to show that okay, at least you have you have started with the service to the client. You've done some work, so to speak. Okay. Right. Now, so I'm debiting bank Y because money has gotten into the trust bank. Trust bank, it's an asset. Now, there is a liability now called trust creditors control that has to be, uh, to be opened as well. Trust creditors control account that has to be affected. It's a liability to us as an attorney practice. Why? That money that has been deposited into our trust bank, it's not our money until the service has been done. So technically what it means is that we are holding money in our trust bank that belongs to somebody else. So if that money belongs to somebody, in, who is that somebody? It's a trust creditor, which is basically a client anyways, in simple terms. Right. So let's okay. say the, the person has deposited 5,000. So what's going to happen is, uh, oh, sorry. Account debited, account credited, because remember the issue, the issue is, is this one that I'm trying to show you now, equity plus liability. So obviously the account debited, it's simple. It's gonna be the trust bank, uh, trust bank. And then the account credited, it's gonna be what? Trust, trust creditors, creditors control. Now, one account, it's an asset. So effectively, your assets would have to increase by 5,000 rands. But the other one, it's a liability. And when you see as a liability is being credited anyways, it means they are increasing. Remember with that example, where you bought a car on credit from a, from a bank, you credited the loan, thin bank, and then you, cre you debited what? The VI code that you were buying. So in this case, it would be plus also for the liabilities, no effects on equity column. Now, I'm not saying just because you're not seeing effects on the equity column, there will be no transactions which affect that one. They will be definitely there. But for now, I'm just That's trying true. to make sure that you understand all the different angles in which they can assess you on the basis of assets. That's what I'm trying to establish. So what is up in leadership with client one? Oh, sorry, sorry, yes. sorry, leadership. Yes, sir. In this case, you put plus on liability because where uh, you, 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 there's plus 5,000 on liabilities. Yes, sir. So that one is in line with trust creditors control, isn't it? That's correct. That's correct. So this what is in, in line to the trust creditors control. Yes. It, it means that um, that plus, basically, that plus, yes, uh, it, they pay 5,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, on liabilities is plus five thousand also. Yes. What does this mean? Not supposed to be minus five thousand on their side. No, 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 no. Uh, why we are putting plus five thousand with to with the resulting effect, of course, of trust creditors control? It's because the money that has been deposited into the trust bank, it's not our money; mm -hmm. it's clients' money. Okay. So, mm -hmm. because it's clients' money. That money has been given to us, which is simply to reflect the fact that a client is entrusting us with their money. So we are holding money oh, in our trust bank oh. account on their behalf. So these are... So hands, hands, is not, hands is not minus liability. Yeah, hands is not them. minus here. Yeah, because the money is just gotten in. So think about okay. it in the case where you have uh, bought something on credit... <clears throat> So you've received that credit. 
you know, you have not yet re repaid it. So there will be a, a okay. case like, for instance, where there is a transfer now of trust money, obviously, to the business bank account, you would notice this trust creditors will be credited. And then something else would have to be, I mean, trust creditors will be debited and then something else has to be credited, right? Like, uh, um, okay, a typical... So, uh, like uh, with this, trust, trust, trust creditors uh, control will be, credit, will be debited um, when, 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 when there's transfer of trust monies now, because now okay. it means um, we are entitled to that money, which was in our trust okay. bank account after we've done the service. So we can now transfer the money from the trust bank to the business bank. So for record keeping purposes, there will be a transaction to, to, do, to show the effect of the trust creditors control account of that client that will be affected. So obviously, effectively, it means we have to debit trust creditors and it will be a minus on the liability column when we do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't worry, that will be when we get to liabilities. For now, what I wanted you to understand is the scenario where a client is paying money immediately to the okay. trust bank okay. account for a transact, I mean, for a service to be done. So this will be there recording effect of the transaction. You are debiting the trust bank and then you are crediting the trust creditors control account. So you can come across such transactions like this. Now the question is, what about if there is no payment whatsoever that has been made by the client, but the client is requested for services to be done? How do we deal with that? So clients too, there's a service requested, but no payment made as yet, or no payments made at that moment. All right, so what this means is uh, there are two accounts. One account that will be debited because the client has not paid us. Effectively, it's called a client's control, right? And because, I mean, this is going to be income to us, going to have to credit fees are we together so this one it's an asset account and this one it's a it's an income all right and with income that's where you see effects on equity now when you go to the uh to the uh what you call this basic accounting equation so obviously this is account uh, debited count credited and then of course here we've got the effects on assets equity and then of course liability so let's assume that uh, the fees we have charged this person is to the value of 3k Right, let's just assume the fees is how much? 3,000 rands. Right, how are we going to record this on the basic accounting equation effect? And of course, what account is to be debited and what account is to be credited? So, under these circumstances, client control to be debited, and then the fees account is the one that will be credited, right? Clients are control account is open simply to reflect that a client is owing us money. So these are like debtors, right? Clients control is the same thing as debtors in pure accounting. Now, so our debtors are increasing because these people are owing us money, which is in form of fees for our services rented. Now, because a client control account is an asset and it's an asset is being debited, when you debit assets, it means you are increasing assets. Therefore, we have to see a plus 3K on the asset column. Now, fees, it's an income, and income always increases on the credit side. So what's going to be the effect of income on the basic accounting equation? Normally, with incomes, incomes would always increase the equity column. Sorry, uh, plus 3,000 rands. 
like that. Zero effect on liability yeah. column. Are we together, sir? So I mean, uh, no, I was just confirming if we are together. You are understanding okay. what is happening yeah, there? Yeah. This this person basically is owing us the yeah. amount of two thousand rand. Yeah. So the account that's gonna be credited, that's gonna be debited. Is yeah. The, is the clients because they are owing us. Yes. And then we credit what? We credit fees. Fees, yeah. So these are service fees to be precise. Okay, service fees. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Service fees okay. for them services that we have rendered or for the services that they have requested from us to do, to perform on their behalf. Because they are expecting to pay us 3,000, so then that is going to be our plus assets of 3,000. Correct. Correct. And then it's going to, in terms of increasing the equity, it becomes an equity now. Yeah. So it now affects so, equity. So the question now would be, why is it like that? Oh, we're left with a minute now. <laughs> All right, why oh. is it that we are showing an effect on the equity column? Because with equity, equity, you know, by nature, it's capital, money that is the owners contribute to start the business, right? But when you're dealing with effects of the basic accounting equation of transactions, incomes affects equity. Okay. Expenses affect uh. equity. So essentially what you need to draw from that is that with an income, it always increases your equity. With an expense, it always reduces your equity. So I will show you with transactions that would involve income and expenses, how they'll be affecting the equity column. It will make more sense when we do practical examples, but that will be for session, I mean, lecture number three, which we'll deal with next week. Okay, okay. Are we together, leader? No, yes, 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 yes. Uh, and then we are still going to give me the sum of these notes. <laughs> you know, definitely, definitely, I will. Okay, I will. Yeah. All right. Perfect. 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 Any questions?